I was very excited to finish um, Talk Nuva's level because I was very excited to finish this game. Um, partly because this game has taken a very long time, um, way longer than I would like, and because I've gotten somewhat obsessive over it, it's eaten into my schedule um, more than I would have liked it to. Um, but I did have somewhat in the middle of my brain, not in the front, not over, not in the back, the possibility that there could be one extra level after you finish all the Nuva levels, because that's how Bionicle, the game, you know, the, the PlayStation, Xbox, PC port worked, was after you finished the Nuva levels, for which they didn't have one for each Toa because they never finished the game, essentially, and there was an extra attack a Nuva level. And sure enough, on the GBA port, there's this extra level after you finish all the Nuva levels. Now, in Bionicle the game proper, I haven't played it yet, but as I understand it, the Takanuva level is just a boss. It's just a multi-stage boss. It isn't like it doesn't have terrain, like an ordinary level. I'm hoping that's what this would be, um, but knowing the way this game goes, it's probably just going to be a nightmare. Yeah, so I got kind of this not really a surprise extra level at the end that I'm not looking forward to doing. It's not like I really don't like this game that much. I really do like it. It's just time consuming. Um, anyway, let's actually play this kind of surprise, not really extra level, which hopefully is just a boss, but may not be. Okay, the terrain's a little weird looking. That's a door, of course. Does he have double jump? Yes, he has. Just like in Bionicle the game proper, he has glide, but he doesn't have double jump, he just has glide. So he has glide only. Well, that's interesting. Oh, oops. Oh, this is not a door, it just goes inside. Oh. So then you jump this way. Okay. Okay, these aren't doors either. Man, the texture of this really obscures the positions of these platforms. Yeah, it is just a boss. Okay. He has a weak spot. It's on his back. Um, pay close attention to his color. Okay, so when you change his color, you shoot him in the back. So it's another one of those jump over him things. Look, why is there a Batorn in Lightstone count? Okay, jump over him like... Oh. I can jump over him by like a bow rock, but it doesn't seem to have... Now why are there Matorn? Is there like Matorn up here or something? Or is that is there by default and they didn't bother to take it off for Okay, I like this mode better. But I would think I would have hit the weak spot. But no I didn't. Maybe it comes off at an angle. That's the... Yeah, it's like at an angle. You have to come at it...
So doing like the bull rock is not working. Can I somehow catch his shots? Not likely. Yeah, you can't do that. Okay. Can't do a front flip. Well, that got nowhere. Proximity didn't seem to help.
Yes, yeah, it's simply that he's turned to the side is the only like issue with this. Well, I'll have to think about this one. So let me explain. Um, so last time I tried for the first time, Takanuva's level. And I couldn't figure out how to do the boss. And I thought, you know, it doesn't really seem like they would possible for me to think of a way to do this, as I am completely and utterly stumped. Um, so I might just watch a playthrough of it. So of course I don't ever really want to um, watch playthroughs of a game while I'm also playing through it, because part of the idea of a Let's Play is you exhibit what your reactions to what's going on are, and how your brain processes and reacts to them, and how you can f how you figure out the problems for yourself what the process of figuring out the problems and solving the puzzle looks like. So, ever since I decided that I wanted to record this game, I haven't watched anybody else play it since then. And so everything... Now I did, by chance, happen to watch a couple minutes of footage of this game before starting to record it. But ever since I decided I wanted to record it and record it, I haven't watched any other footage since then, besides re-watching my own footage for editing reasons. But... I couldn't, didn't have the self-control not to try to watch footage of the boss of Takanuba's level because it didn't look like there was any way for me to be able to figure it out. Now, if I were to play this back in 2003, I wouldn't have the resources I would have had today. I would have had to have figured it out at the time or else I wouldn't have been able to ever complete it. And what I learned was, and so I decided to click on the Beaver House's Let's Play. And I saw that they were using save states, which using save states is kind of like giving the game developer the middle finger, right? They, when they write the game, they decide how much you have to go before you can reset or um, from what points you can start from. And if you use save states, you're saying, you're basically saying, what you are requiring of me is too difficult. What you want me to do, I'm just going to ignore it and I'm going to... Yeah. Anyway, um, if you press, press the right bumper, it will toggle um, which element you're shooting. Which is something you can do on Takanuva's level and no other one. And so, that's all I really need to see. I didn't need to see into the boss at all. I just saw the first, like, mit the first few seconds. And saw that Joe discovered you could do this. And now I'm going, oh, now I know what Takua means when he says pay attention to his color. And so that's going to be enough for me to figure out how to do the boss. The problem is I wouldn't have thought ever that that would ever be a mechanic, 
so I wouldn't have thought to ever hit the right bumper if there was no reason to do so. Like, why would I think you could do that? But somebody figured it out at some point. I don't know, I just don't have the brain it takes. But anyway, that's all I saw. So I saw that you could do this on someone else's playthrough, and that's it. And I'm gonna try to implement that and see if it works. I probably would never would have thought of it otherwise. But it still might be a disappointment. There's like no way. Because I'm too specific. I'm too like, I have to have a motivation to do something, otherwise I won't do it. Who would have thunk? Okay. So I guess the idea is you shoot him in the back where you have the right color, have the color that matches his back, basically. That's what I'm guessing you do, now that I know this. Uh, okay. So I believe, I believe he starts green. Wow, I got hit already. Yeah. So I want to be using green. Yep. Okay. Well, hot two time. I think I'm running on foot chasing me. Whoops. Okay, we gotta do better. So he shoots immediately upon start. So, okay. You kind of want to stay close to him because it's easier to physically evade him than it is to um, avoid the ranged attacks, it appears. Okay, he seems to go in order of the right bumpers, which is convenient. Whoa. was inconvenient. up. Just don't get so far away from him. Hit the wrong button. Okay. Stop hitting the bu Stop hitting the bumper. Get your finger off the bumper. It's not really a bumper because it's an emulation. Of course. Okay, just hit the bumper once to get your finger off of it. Hit the bumper key. Close to him. There we go. Get closer to him. There. It's kind of a strange, unconventional boss where you want to be close to it most of the time. Rule of thumb for. I hit the wrong button again! <laughs> Tendus dude. Oh, 
Okay. Now get your finger off the bumper. Why would you accidentally press the bumper trigger? That would be silly. Okay, get it once. Finger off of it. Okay, get it once. Finger off of it. Why is my coordination so tricked? Like, wants to return to the bumper. Okay, one bumper. Just one. Okay. Okay, yeah, get close to him. Stay close to him. Okay. Oops, I jumped by accident. I want to hit the bumper. Okay. So many coordination mistakes. I'm frustrating myself so ridiculously hard by my coordination mistakes. Okay, we got a shot from the movie. The Makuta has been vanquished and the balance between light and dark is restored. Congratulations, Matanui is saved. That was simple. The people, you don't say people of Bionicle. Okay, of the land rejoice, they are safe at last. Their quest is at an end. Okay, credits. So the final ending dialogue said the word people in it, which was sacrilegious. Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I ever would have been able to think of hitting the right bumper and that changing the color of my ammo. Huh. Well, I could say that this is my second GBA game. And so I still haven't quite figured out, like, mechanics tropes of GBA, of the Game Boy. And maybe that's, like, a mechanics trope. And now that I've seen something like that, I'll be able to recognize it if I see it again. Huh. Once you know that, then it fights trivial. The fr trivial, the problem is knowing that. Okay, so that was my first time through playing this. It'll probably be, in my life, I'll probably play through this two more times. Um, oh, another trick I picked up from the Beaver House is use the left bumper. Anyway, um, hopefully, uh, hopefully um, so once off recording, and then the second, the third time, still on recording, but way more practiced, and so there won't be as much, like, fail attempts it'll be more of a walkthrough and less of a let's play. Uh, but that's it for now. Um, the difficulty level of this game is pretty good. Um, 
It makes you feel so much satisfied once you finished it. You don't feel like you've done nothing. I better, I'm gonna try muting the game audio. Um. Obviously the control system Okay, I'll just go through like go through the rant. There are several things about the, the uh, game that can make it frustrating in ways that seem maybe negative. Like they don't frustrate you in the way that somebody who would play a video game for achievement would like. Um, one is the control system. Um, on the GBA physical GBA, the up key would make you go up and to the right. The left key would make you go up and left. The down key would make you go down and left. And the right key would make you go down and right. And this kind of makes sense in that the way the game's laid out, the grid is along diagonals primarily. Well, it's a diagonal grid, like um, Minog, uh, Vinog, not Minog, Vinog and uh, Quest for the Toa. So it's a similar diagonal grid. Except unlike Quest for the Toa, the features tend to kind of line up the, the, the rooms are cut, or, or they're cleaved along the grid, as opposed to um, 45 degrees to the grid, and you have that jaggedness. So the most the motion would be along the grid. Uh, but, and also the, plat the, the platforms and platforming, you move along the grid primarily, and the grid is diagonal. So because those are primary directions of motion, those would be the keys. However, when I first started playing it, that layout was ruining me so hard um it would be very difficult for me to imagine actually playing this on the gba i presume i'd get used to it after a few hours but it was brutal i because i'm emulating this i just changed the i've already said this the very first episode but i changed the key mapping such that it would actually use the l period comma and apostrophe not apostrophe l period comma and semicolon keys as opposed to the arrow keys um, in an attempt to make the motion line up with the locations of my fingers a lot more. Um, now, when you have, like, the rail climbs, where you're hanging by your hands, then it actually is, left is the closest direction along the rail to left, right is the closest direction along the rail to right, up is jump, and as so which ends up being the same as B, and then down is drop. So, and of course, the password is, the password typing in is up, down, left, right, so that setup will confuse you a little bit when you get to those situations. It didn't affect me too much, though. That just kind of explains why typing in passwords for me was so weird. Because um, for some reason, I can't handle that 45-degree rotation. In almost any situation, reversed or forward. So that's the first annoying thing about it. The second is there are no controls tutorials. So basically, it turns out the right bumper is what you use if you can't figure out anything other way to do it, it's probably done using the right bumper. Except for gliding and Lewis level, that's you done by holding down the B button. <laughs> so those, like, in Galley's level you have these wall jumps. You don't know how to do them, but it turns out that it's the right bumper, but you have to think to use the right bumper. You have to also jump on rails. Well, that's a different key than the regular jump, which is B. That's also right bumper. And right bumper is also the thing you use to move the camera independently of the character. So it already has a rule. So you have to, like, think, oh, this thing already has a role. I have to also use it for everything else that you didn't have enough buttons on the GPA to put assign a button to. So, of course, right bump, bumper, bumper, is always to also destroy a rock in Tahu's level, pick up a rock in Pohatu's level, destroy or uh, push or destroy. You can push and destroy rocks in Anua's level. Uh, so maybe you think some mechanic, because those mechanics were right bumper and you figure out that, that by just trying all the possible buttons, then maybe everything else I wouldn't know of is also right bumper. But when you get to Takanuva's level, you have this mechanic you can do with the right bumper called switching elements that you don't even know is a thing. <laughs> um, and of course, left bumper is move the character independently of the direction they're looking. And that can actually be useful, be allows you to like back up and shoot. Um, so that's kind of, that's useful in, uh, some of those running around and fighting a bunch of Rocky at once situations. I didn't really use it because I'm not, you know, coordinated enough to do that kind of thing, but it's a useful tool if you're good enough to take advantage of it. So, like a controls tutorial. Um, third thing, Rahi respawn, can't get, the areas cannot be cleared. So, Rahi respawn every time you re-enter an area, which means you can accidentally 
You could be like in the process of defeating every Rahi in an area, but then accidentally exit it. Come back and all the Rahi you've previously defeated have been respawned. Or if you're in the middle of a fight and you accidentally walk out of an area, well, now you've restored whoever you're fighting with to full health. So, you have to be careful not to accidentally leave areas. And once you come back to an area where you've already defeated all the Rocky, the Rocky, you're back again. Now, you would think, well, maybe they, the game doesn't have an ability to save those kind of states. Well, it can keep track of whether or not you've defeated a Rocky before that spawns light stones. Because it doesn't respawn the light stones. And it also remembers when you've picked up a, a tor in an area. So you would think it would be able to remember not to spawn a Rahi. You wouldn't think that would be too hard a thing to code. Now, this is useful. So that's something it's like, I already did this, why I have to do it again kind of thing. Um, now, it wouldn't be, it is useful sometimes in that you can't actually farm health pickups by defeating Rahi over and over again. But uh, it's not something I really used widely. I only used it once in Lee's level. Third, next thing, there is no depth perception. So forward and away from you look exactly the same as up and down. So in some of the now in some of these areas, they try to relieve this problem by telling you where a floating platform is by drawing a dotted line to it. And they also use solid dots to indicate where you need to jump from in order to land on this platform. Now in Tahu's level, I've encountered an issue where those were wrong. That was a problem. But um, sometimes they don't give you these. Like in Anua's level, there's a good example of a platform. I still don't know why this puzzle was meant for exactly. It's a platform you can jump on where they don't give you dotted lines to it. And this was probably facilitated by how that platform would appear if you hit a button. So if they put dotted lines to it, they would have dotted lines going to nowhere until you hit the button. Um, and that's a bit... You have to just kind of guess uh, where you need to jump to land on the platform because distant up and down and in front of and behind are the same. So you can narrow down where it is to a line, but you don't know where on that line it is. Lastly, this well, this game is pretty sting uh, pretty um, stingy with how many lives it gives you in order to complete the task it's asking you to complete. Um, now that's just that's just normal kind of hard. That's a good kind of hard actually. Um, so. It's just being real, I guess. Um, but that's another reason why it's difficult, but that's actually a good reason why it's difficult. Um, I can't really complain about that. That's just how many lives the developers thought you needed in order to get through those obstacles. So. Okay. I guess I've said everything that's on my mind at the moment, so I'll just stop recording. Thank you. If you watched just the last one, thank you for watching it. I'm pretty for sure no one. There's going to be many segments of that that had zero views intermediate intermediately. Um, I could do an edit where I just take out the completion attempts for each level and montage them, and that would be pretty easy to do. Except there wouldn't be a real be a point if I'm going to do a second recording of this later, where it's going to essentially be like that except not montaged. So I probably won't bother. 